Greetings. It is another day in the studio, a new week. I hope that you are all having a wonderful semester so far and really taking in information from this class as well as your other classes. I appreciate all of the feedback, all of the communication from you guys and any other questions that you find, then let's keep using the discussion forum as well as sending emails, okay? So we're working on contour line this week. So our new module is still focusing on line. Um, we're moving into a section that discusses form. Uh, and when we start discussing form, we're talking about an object as a volume, as a three-dimensional shape. So when we begin talking about those forms, um, we start with line and we start with contour line. Uh, if you viewed the PowerPoint presentation, you would have seen the description of what contour line is. In summation, it's touchable edges of a subject. So the information that is not only details on the exterior of the subject, but also the interior features. Anything you could run your hand across and feel, that would uh, be translated as a line in the drawing and um, that would build our contour line drawing. That's what contour is. What it is not is an outline. So it's not a basic outline. We have a lot more content than that. And when I'm talking about interior features and exterior details, we're going to be using a variety of line to be able to show best the materiality of our subject as well as its structure. And the reason that we continue to work with line is because it is our first element of art. It's fundamental. Um, it's the building block for other elements to be placed on top of. So it acts as the scaffolding or the foundation and then we can build value and texture um, and pattern on top of that. But if we don't have something solid to put those on, then the whole structure sort of falls apart. So that's why we're gonna spend um, a few weeks looking at just line, as well as giving you guys a chance to get your materials. So we're gonna work on our newsprint again today uh, or this week because I don't know, the school hasn't communicated with me about our supplies. You have not had the opportunity to get your heavyweight paper. Um, so we'll work on the newsprint, that's fine. Uh, I did have a question the other day about our newsprint versus the heavy weight paper. Um, we are utilizing the newsprint as the workhorse and doing our, um, usually our preparatory sketches on that, planning stages happen on that, and then the heavyweight paper is the paper um, that is going to be the finished drawing or completed drawing so um, to answer that question so i'm going to work through our homework assignment i feel like it is the best demonstration so that you have not only the examples on the homework assignment to look at but you can see the process taking place so let's get started on that with our homework assignment and what the demonstration will include today will be our three gestures that are on one sheet of newsprint. And that acts as not only a reminder of what it is that we worked on last week, but it also reinforces that we're going to be utilizing those gestures and thumbnails as a planning tool and an um, exercise throughout the semester and probably throughout your art making. Um, and then we're going to work on our second sheet of paper to complete uh, one contour line drawing. So this will give you the opportunity, this assignment in particular, to understand the process that we're looking for with all of our assignments going forward, or I should say the majority of them. We'll work through thumbnails, planning stages, and then we'll be transitioning into a separate drawing uh, that would be the completed, refined, finished drawing. So as we go through um, and we're thinking about what we read in our homework assignment, you are going to be doing three gesture drawings on one sheet of this rough newsprint, 18 by 24 inches, and your subject matter is your non-dominant hand. So 
a lot of times people will say that, oh, I know that like I know the back of my hand. And maybe you do know the back of your hand really well, but it's a good subject because we are familiar with it. So as we worked through our gestures last week and sketching, we were working with objects around our house, both organic uh, and man-made, depending on what it is that you chose. And this week, we're going to choose something that uh, all of us have or have experience with. Um, and we're going to be fortunate enough to be working with that organic subject because they're so much more forgiving. We're gonna choose a position to start with. So we're gonna do three separate drawings, three separate poses. So there's one, right? I've got one gesture drawing. And what we were thinking about with our format was being mindful about the size of it and the scale of our drawings within that format. So uh, this is a, a nice fair size, right? For compared to how big my hand is, it's nice to have life size or larger again. Um, and then something that was brought up in our presentation was this idea of utilizing basic shapes as building blocks for our subjects. So when we have a complex form, it may be, or even a simple form, it may be in, uh, helpful to employ those basic shapes, uh, break down the subject. Um, I know that as I look at things that are more complex, sometimes I get wrapped up in what the subject is and trying to make my drawing look like a hand, look like glass, look like uh, a cat, a squirrel, whatever it is, right? Um, and mentally, we have a lot of gymnastics that go on when we think about making something look like um, the object we're replicating in our drawing. And it pr can produce a lot of anxiety uh, and a lot of uh, individuals have expressed a, a sort of a defeatist approach from the onset. So when we shift our thinking into um, what basic shapes could be building blocks for our subject, it helps us to look at the subject in a more formal approach. So it takes the weight out of the subject. It doesn't mean as much because we're not trying to draw a hand. We're trying to draw circles and rectangles and squares and cones. And so that's uh, part of what I was doing in my construction here. And a lot of that has to do with going through school and doing life drawing. That's where we see a lot of gestures and using a lot of basic shapes, you know, uh, circles for joints, uh, straight lines for the bones in between, um, and boxes of varying lengths and widths for uh, everything else. So let's go ahead and do another gesture uh, we're gonna have our hand in a different position and we'll go ahead and give that um, idea of the basic shapes an even larger role in this drawing. So I'll proceed uh, in a slightly different manner, but most of my gesture drawings do end up including basic shapes. It's just a way for me to understand. And as you continue working, um, you'll start observing uh, those basic shapes in what it what you're seeing in your environment and uh, it'll be more of a natural way of seeing and possibly expressing um, and when we use these things we um, don't have to use them exclusively you can borrow parts of them and maybe it works in this situation and not in the other Get those knuckles in, coming into that 
middle finger and then noticing that I gave myself an ellipse or a circle. I started off with this rectangular shape for the back of the hand, um, came in with uh, an arch and then <laughs> decide, oh yeah, I'm doing basic shapes, so turn that into an ellipse or an oval, which is a flattened circle or circle in perspective, and then come in with circles to describe those um, first um, knuckles here, and noticing that those travel in an arch, so that's, we're following along that curve of our ellipse. So we have a rise and a fall, and they're getting slightly bigger this way, at least for my hand. Um, and then coming, extending, I could go ahead, I have, uh, that bone coming through here so I can have those, those pieces showing. And then I have that extension out, so that would be a great place for me to have an extension. Another uh, ball, an extension, another ball, and then finally the end. So I could cap that here, oops, kind of running out of room, and then come back around can flesh this out by giving myself another box here and I could give myself yet another one down here. And then I'll move on, I've got a space in between and I can follow that line out this direction. And I can look at this relationship. So just as the first knuckles go in the arch, the second ones do too, so everybody follows along. So if I have this shape, I can have another one up here and then I'm gonna follow the arch downward to find the spot for that second joint and then I'm going to extend here. Same thing that um, third, uh, excuse me, first I third, yeah, third one. Um, it's going to follow suit too, so right in here and then a little extension to the tip of the finger. And I can also draw a comparison with uh, my pencil looking at the placement of this tip of the finger to this one. So if I put my pencil here, I have this angle and if I were to put that here, it looks like I should be stopping right about there, right? I'm taking the same angle and comparing in my drawing what I have in life, and that is, it gives me a pretty accurate view, so that's helpful. Good, good place for comparison. So I'll go ahead and place those rectangles in to, again, give more shape or body, uh, flesh out that drawing, be a little bit softer on the edges here, and I have the extension of, an, of that um, ring finger this this position so I'll go ahead and throw that in there just the knuckle the fat on the side or the space for the muscle over there and then last but not least traveling down seeing that I have the extension of the thumb as it folds in take a look at my angle when I'm not sure see that that's turning direction. Okay, so that's our second gesture and really holding strong with those basic shapes as part of the construction. Uh, what we're noticing as we work is that the gesture drawings haven't changed. Those are quick studies. Uh, we're looking for basic directional information, um, placement of parts to the whole, beginning to understand proportion, and getting familiar with our subject. And even though we're familiar with our hands, drawing them may be less familiar. So that's what we're doing there. So let's go ahead and get our third gesture drawing in and then we'll move on to our contour line drawing. Okay, there we go, let's try this one. <laughs> so a different position for each drawing. Again, using, um, looking at landmarks. So I've already described the thumb and that joint, this part of the pad of the hand and coming into that area of the palm and that first digit or index finger. And so when I'm trying to think about location here to here, it's helpful for me sometimes to go ahead and put my pencil across and look at what that angle is. And also just kind of, um, Visually what I'm doing is just touching here and here to understand if I'm in uh, the generally the right place So I'll go ahead and throw this in and I also like to look at the the angle too So these fingers are going in a lot of different directions 
this one's coming up. And it looks like I'm gonna have an overlap into my first drawing, or excuse me, my second drawing, and I'm not worried about that, that's fine. And even some foreshortening, which just means that I'm seeing more of, less of the, the entirety of the subject and just uh, overlapping on top of itself. So that's what you have that feeling of when you see your pencil full on and you start turning, 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 and then all you see is that very end or the very tip of it. And something that's, um, that we thought about last week in our gesture drawing was putting our subjects flat on a surface so that we could maintain the same perspective. And I know that whenever I draw my hand, it ends up kind of um, shrinking down and my fingers are relaxing as I'm drawing. Um, so just be aware that that may happen to you also. Um, and we just do best we can. Remember these are gesture drawings, so we'll be okay if they're not uh, perfect. So those are our three. Okay, we're ready to move on. We're beginning on our part two of our homework assignment and part two of our demonstration. <laughs> um, what we're going to look at is the beginning stage is just like how we've been drawing with gestures. So we're having our non-dominant hand as our subject again. This time we are doing a contour line drawing. So we're gonna start with the gesture. Uh, that would be Jimmy, if you just heard that. That would be Jim Jim, the 16-year-old uh, cat. <laughs> She's just saying hi again. <laughs> Um, they, cats do love the studio, so you're bound to hear them or see them at one time or another. Um, but as we get into our gesture drawing, last week we were working with, I believe we we're working with our 2B graphite pencil. I worked with that for our three gesture drawings um, for this demonstration, and um, I think it would be a fine choice, either that or the HB graphite pencil. So I'm going to utilize that to be for my gesture drawing and then I'm going to move on to my 6B graphite pencil. And um, what I would like to take the opportunity to say is that I do recognize that we have not received our supplies from the college yet. So our pencils are part of what we're supposed to be given. So perhaps you don't have that selection. A pencil, a graphite pencil is fine. And graphite is a mixture of lead and clay, and you would use them for your scan, any Scantron tests that you've taken, and probably anything in a math class that you've written with a pencil is a graphite pencil. So go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, utilize what you have at home. That's fine, just fine. For our for this drawing, it's going to be a longer drawing, so you may experience what I talked about before in terms of that hand fatigue. And it sounds a little bit silly, but the longer you're holding your hand, maybe it starts this way and then it just starts like a leaf or a flower starts wilting. <laughs> so you may want to pick a relaxed position for your hand to be in. Um, yeah, so maybe just start here and then see how it ends up naturally and if you can maintain that. 
Uh, I also would imagine that you guys are maybe drawing on a flat surface. Um, I have an easel in my studio. I actually prefer to draw flat but for the purpose of class and demonstrations, I end up drawing um, from observation uh, on a, a surface that is parallel to, to my body. Uh, but my preference actually is to have that flat. Uh, if um, Why I say anything about it is that if your surface is flat, perhaps resting your hand on the paper would be a really helpful thing to do just to have your hand be at rest so you don't worry so much about it changing. So I'll go ahead and um, find some kind of a, a position. I actually like that first gesture drawing I did having it, my hand in that uh, closed fist. So maybe I'll have a version of that. Yeah, maybe, uh, that might be kind of nice for me. Yeah, that could be interesting. Um, so I know where the camera is. This is more of what I'm seeing than what you guys are seeing here. Um, so I am very aware that what you're looking at while I'm drawing is not quite the same. Um, and welcome to my world as a teacher when I come around and look at your drawings in the classroom and I'm trying to, you know, get down on your level, have your same eye level and uh, position so I could see what you're seeing. Um, so anyhow, that, that's what I deal with all the time in the classroom. So I think this will be good. And why I, I like this is, one, um, I've got a lot of in, uh, content here. So there's a lot of folds and... Um, touchable information and when we think about a contour line drawing we're not we're not shading there's no value being added uh, we're not working with um, pattern at this time or really uh, anything that would be uh, surface information we're just focused on everything that we can feel so I want to make sure that I have information that's going to give me a drawing that has a lot of visual interest with just the line um, describing both that exterior and interior touchable edges. So I talked about starting with a gesture drawing. So we're going, and then we're only doing one drawing here, so we're going to really try and scale up. Uh, so let's begin with that gesture drawing. And by now we're getting more used to the larger format, as well as how maybe if we like to utilize those basic shapes. Um, last week we talked about starting in a place that was easily defined and building from there. So that's what I choose to do with regardless of subject. So I'm looking at uh, a smaller area of the back of the hand looking again at that arch that's there on the knuckle so coming up at the top and then thinking about primarily I'm seeing that index finger and that big first knuckle so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a really big shape here because I'm drawing largely so I need a big shape and then I'm gonna come next door and I'm gonna rise and there's going to be a, an overlap of the index to the middle finger, knuckle, and then I see just ever so slightly a little bit of that ring finger, knuckle. So there, and let's go ahead, I'm going to go ahead out this direction, just start to see that here, and then there's a drop, so I can have this, if I come over, I'll come down a little bit and I have that push out. Again, still working like I would a gesture. So, so far, this is the same thing we've been doing. So you should find some comfort in that, you know, even though our contour drawing involves a lot more careful observation, we have the beginning planning stages um, be the same. So I have my first knuckle on the thumb, second looks like it rises a little bit from my index finger here, and then Last but not least, I can even draw that comparison again, looks good there, and give the last one. So that's okay. Um, that's gonna come up, and that's gonna be right 
on top of that thumb. There's also gonna be an extension out behind, and then it looks like that's about as much as I can see there. So here, and then right here, I'm gonna to continue to follow that out. So I'm gonna travel the same direction, then come back, and then straight down from here, that's the end point. I can start coming back in, and that's where the palm of the hand is. This, I can look better at that angle, right? And still utilizing that motion from the shoulder and elbow um, as much as I can. And then I have a change in direction at the wrist. So this feels really solid for, well, I guess I could do a little bit more. Maybe I could, but then I start to get into that refinement stage. So uh, we start to talk about the contour, but I'll give it a teeny bit more content. All right, so, so far so good with the gesture. Uh, now what we talked about in the presentation of PowerPoint was your new best friends. So your first new best friend is seeing and your second new best friend is patience. So what we think about is that we're moving from the sufficient and efficient observations that we practice in the real world to get us from point A to point B safely and quickly. And we're going to be going into the in-depth detail and accuracy in form that's necessary in our observational drawings. So that means that we're going to look carefully and draw slowly and um, just take our time. Another point that I brought up in the in our presentation uh, on contour line is that this is a study and studying takes time. So take your time, it's not a race. This is the work that you're meant to be doing. Just as you would spend time reading and writing um, or solving equations, you're going to be um, working through this equation. So, Let's get into uh, putting more detail in. And as we do, that's where we wanna think about those attributes of line. Uh, my subject, your subject, our hands, uh, have some really interesting shapes to them. And what I really enjoy are all of these wrinkles that happen when I uh, fold my fingers in and the palm contracts, um, the ridges that I have on my knuckles, the shift from the flesh of the finger to the, the nail, um, and even that protrusion of the bone along the back side of the hand. So that's all wonderful, touchable information, and it's extremely descriptive of the subject that we're looking at. It helps our viewer to understand the softness of the surface of that subject um, and gives the illusion of reality. And that's what it is that we're trying to do in these drawings. So our attributes of line are very line. A variety of line is going to help us to show um, the myriad of details and get it to read um, really strongly as our subject. So we'll look at uh, actual and implied line direction and weight. Okay, here we go. I'll use my foundation of the gesture drawing um, to begin. So always choosing a, a spot. And as I come through, I'm mindful about looking at my subject, looking here and looking here, looking here, looking here. It's never one-sided. I'm not always looking over at my subject because this will go awry. And I'm not always looking at my drawing because that means that I am creating information um, I'm drawing what I think, not what I see. So that was uh, another one of our mantras is we do not want to uh, draw what we think we see. 
So we want to draw what's actually there. So I would start, give yourself a starting point, right? Whatever is a really clear, maybe where you began your gesture drawing um, is a good logical place for you to start. So I'm going to start with that first knuckle and get that shape to be more closely resembling what it is that I see in front of me. And as I draw, um, because of the practice that I've had with drawing, it seems more natural for me to include implied lines or broken lines um, to have a shift in the thickness or thinness of a line um, as well as focusing on direction and how that influences the um, how this the observer reads the drawing so I think all of that it, it starts to become more uh, natural as you continue to use it uh, and I switched over to my 6b pencil and that's because I would like for you to be able to and, and in your drawings what I'd like you to do is if you only have one pencil then draw lightly so don't push down really hard. And then when it comes to the contour part that you're building on top of your gesture, then we'll have a little bit more uh, weight in or pressure, um, and that will show a difference in your contour versus your gesture. So there are some wonderful areas where we have nice long stretches And it's okay, you don't have to do it all in one stretch. You can do smaller areas and then pick up again. That's uh, completely acceptable. There's great, a uh, great idea there. And then maybe I'll just take a look at this piece next door. And we're looking, um, so a word I used earlier was landmark. So where does this knuckle run into this finger? What's that cross section? So it's helpful to begin thinking about how these pieces interact. And while it's rounded, it kind of flattens out along the top. And then I start to experience that round. And it's gonna keep coming around. Yep, that looks good. So here's our completed contour line drawing. And in looking at the finished piece, this is what I would like to see on your uh, contour line drawing. The gesture drawing visible underneath so that I can see your construction. And then your contour lines built on top of that structure. And as you're placing those contour lines you're thinking about what type of line, what the line is doing. Is it a long continuous arch with a slight change in direction here, continuation and then a pull over? Or in this case, is it an uh, implied line or a broken line that tapers as it continues? I have a lot of shorter broken lines here, a lot of variables in terms of weight, and then I do have a lot of directional shifts. So you can see the bones are going, they're fanning across, um, the arches, they're repeating themselves as they go in a fan as well. And then I have a lot of directional shifts in terms of the folds in the skin. And uh, I didn't, <laughs> when you really start looking at your skin, it's kind of crazy all of the details that are there. So I'm not looking for each and every 
um, hair follicle or skin cell to show up, I uh, would really like um, enough information and big information um, where I'm seeing and things that I really am able to touch and feel. So where those knuckles are, these wrinkles and folds. Um, and then the direction of these markings helps to show the roundness of that joint, right? The direction here helps to go with the rounding of that form. Um, as I come down, I'm showing that, um, uh, excuse me, that squeeze there, that's helping to show the direction that those uh, folds are going with um, the direction of that part uh, of the hand. Uh, here where I start to see the back of the hand come into the wrist and there's a change in direction here to here, then this gives me, that directional line gives me a shift, right? a stopping and breaking point to that next space. So we really have covered a lot this week. Contour line we will use again and again throughout the term. Um, once we start uh, working into value, then we won't have as much of an emphasis on uh, solely line. We'll kind of taper that back and focus more on a naturalistic way of seeing, which is through shifts in value. Uh, but what we're concerned about right now is uh, really focusing on taking our time and coming through and seeing, um, again, those landmarks or those meeting points where one part comes into another, um, looking for uh, how tall this part is compared to this, what's the width here compared to the width here. So those you'll be comparing all semester, but especially throughout your drawing, um, even if you're working on a single subject and parts of it, its whole. Um, and then next week, what we'll be doing is we'll be building on this and adding m another subject. So working, we'll be working with multiple subjects and understanding more about proportion um, and how those pieces fit together, space and ground planes. Um, Probably the one of the pieces that I think is most interesting here is noticing that my gesture drawing extends out this direction and up here and over here um, in a different, and then my contour line drawing occupies an area just inside and just down from. Um, it's okay to make those adjustments. That's what the refinement process is about. So the gesture drawing is to give you a place to work, to help you understand positioning, and to get something on the page so it's not just a white page. Um, once you have that and you've got your starting point and your plan, as you're searching for those details, you are bound to have a shift in where the information is located. Hopefully it's not a huge shift, but if it is, that's fine. We look at it, observe it, and then we don't stop there. We actually make the adjustment. And then you can see in my drawing uh, up here where it's dark and heavy and over here, and then even right in this space, um, I, wanted, I didn't want my line where it was, and so I wanted to emphasize and come back and make that shape closer to what it is I was observing in my subject. Um, so for this exercise, for both of them, for your gestures on this sheet of newsprint, using that 2D pencil, and then on this sheet of newsprint for your contour line drawing, let's leave our erasers out of it, right? I just want you to think about using lots of lines so just lines and lines and lines. That's what the gesture is about, movement, placement, and our basic shapes, and drawing transparently. So obviously we're not making clear drawings, but what I mean by that is not being afraid to overlap, right? I have this circle on top of this one, on top of that one, and this information goes across this. That's fine, that's how you get your best result is to go ahead and draw through as if it's continuing because it does. It's just that we can't see it from our perspective if there's something in the way, but it's best just to kind of draw through. 
Um, and that's what we've been practicing with our gesture drawings, hopefully. Um, and we continue that and then as we refine, slow down, refine by putting in these details, working on that exterior shape, coming in and making sure the interior details align accurately with what's on the outside. So I think it's pretty clear that we're not just doing an outline. The contour has a lot more content, but uh, that's what we've got going on. Uh, so a practice from last week and getting familiar with our new subject matter and then walking through that refinement process, which is the contour line drawing. Um, with your three gesture drawings, uh, I'd like before, let's spend no more than five minutes on each of these, okay, on your gestures. And then when you move into your contour line drawing, we're going to spend no less than 10 minutes on this drawing. So that might not even be enough time, but that's what I'd like for you to think of. It's, it, am I going to be timing you? No, I'm not there with you. Uh, are you timing yourself? I don't know. Do you need to? You could, um, but it's a suggestion so that you understand what I'm looking for in terms of spending time and concentrating on your subject and the drawing. Um, remember that there's no shading, so we're not coming through and adding light and shadow or defining light and shadow. The form is only being described with line work right now. So you can work with the materiality and volume with your three basic attributes of line. That's why we introduced that and have that idea of line quality is so that we can show um, separation, we can distinguish certain areas, uh, show uh, materiality as well as that this is a three-dimensional form or the um, recording of a three-dimensional form. All right, so I think that's pretty clear uh, what it is that's set out for you for this week. Um, if you end up having any questions, then please let's use the discussion forum to, you're always welcome to email me. I realize there is an overlap in our content because I had a difficulty in getting the information visible to you last week that our gesture drawings and quizzes are actually not due until Wednesday of this week. Um, I gave an extension there, but I would like us to get back on track. So this content is up and we're resuming our um, our schedule of new content on Monday and having the assignment and quiz due uh, on Sunday by the end of the night. I would like for you guys to meet Thumbs. <laughs> uh, we're going to consider him the mascot for our class. <laughs> he came in during uh, our drawing time. You heard Jim Jim earlier maybe. Um, and then this is Thumbs who you may have also heard earlier. Uh, so I thought I would go ahead and introduce Buddy here. And uh, so you guys can be thinking about what's going on in my studio. <laughs> and maybe you have some equal enjoyment in your studio. All right guys, I'll talk to you soon. Um, happy week, happy drawing.